Hi, this is your instructor, Carl Leopson, for SERP 590 Single Case Research Design at the University of Arizona. And I want to talk to you about the culminating activity for this course. So there are two things. You can do, you can do one thing or you can do the other thing. There are 40 points left to earn in this course. Either project will get you an opportunity to earn those 40 points. Okay, so one of the things you could do is to do an article review, actually four of them, right? So review four articles. Um, the other thing you could do is write a single case research proposal. Both are worth 40 points. Choose either one. Let's look a little more closely at each of them. So let's start by taking a closer look at the article review. You remember back in week three, we learned about the basic elements of a single case design article by going through a worksheet that looked just like this one? Well, the whole idea of having you do four of those as your culminating activity is because it gives you the opportunity to, to go back through articles now and show your level of understanding. And you've learned so much more. You'll know so much more about each of these elements now, you've considered them all semester long in relation to your research question. Frankly, I think this is a great option. Um, it's a new option in this course. I haven't offered it in the past, but it's a, it's a great option for people that, one, don't think they're going to use the research proposal that they're going to would put together as the other option, and who um, it's a it's kind of a, a not a quicker option because it's also going to take some time for you to go through each of the four articles carefully and represent your comments well um, but it it is a different in terms of conceptualizing All right so so each one of these worksheets is worth 10 points and each element here is worth half a point All right so there are 20 places for you to say whether or not an element was present and to make a comment um, about that indicator or that element within the article. Make sure if you do this one, you every time you tell me if it's yes, no, or put a question mark and then write a comment that helps me know that you understand what it is that you are evaluating as the indicator. Maybe it's you put a little note about what you found in the article in the comment. Maybe you make some reference to the specifics of the article that make it unsure whether or not they're meeting the indicator or not. Maybe you make a comment to say they did it well because or they did it poorly because. And then over in this last column that says for instructor demonstrates understanding, that's where I'm going to put a check mark. If I, I read your comment and it shows me that you've demonstrated your understanding in that article of that indicator, and for each one of those check marks, you will get half a point, and I'll total all that up. And so each one of these worksheets is worth 10 points. You can use any of the articles that I have posted for you to read during this class. I prefer you not reach out and grab other articles from the internet. But um, if you really feel like you want to do that, make sure you you reach out to me first and give me a reference so I can look at it and make sure it truly is a single case research article that we should evaluate. Okay, so that's it. That's that is option one, article reviews. Research proposal. So the research proposal, I posted a template for you. 
okay, so that you can make sure you cover every part. So here are the project grading criteria. All right, I've posted those so you can look at them also. Your proposal, people that do it, it's going to turn out to be 8 to 12 to 15 pages long. All right, and this is a great option if you are planning on actually engaging in this research. Um, just make sure that if you do the proposal, you get an advisor, you sit with your advisor and go through it, and I'd be happy to work with you and your advisor. But it's a great option if you're going to do this for dissertation, if you're planning on using this for your master's project, for your master's degree. So here are all the pieces that it has. It has a literature review, and, and I'm not saying extensive. I'm saying a literature review to be acceptable would have to have two to three references, kind of at the, like at the beginning of this course when I asked you to look up a couple articles and tell me how they fit together with your interests. That's what I'm talking about. Um, I give you four points just for putting your research questions at the end of that introduction section. Easy four points. Um, two points each for subjects, setting, materials, equipment, dependent and independent variables where you describe each of those. Experimental design is four points. Experimental design means you're telling me what design you chose, why you chose it over other designs, and how that design is going to demonstrate experimental control. So if you're doing a research proposal, don't do a research proposal about an A-B design. Um, there's no purpose in that because an A-B design does not demonstrate experimental control and you wouldn't end up writing a research proposal for it in the first place. Okay. Um, then there's the procedures section. This is probably the hardest section to write. General procedures the baseline and probe sessions and intervention sessions. Basically, this is like a guide for anybody who would be reading this. They should be able to read this section and see in their mind's eye what the researcher is doing to run every session of their study. Then there's the data collection and analysis section where you describe how you are going to collect the data on the dependent variable. That includes inner observer agreement. And so remember, we've done some of these pieces. We did that as one of our discussion pieces. Um, you describe how you're going to collect treatment integrity data and any treatment integrity issues, and then how you would collect social validity data. You'll recognize that we've done a lot of these things throughout the semester. Um, we've talked about how you would collect data. We've talked about social validity with, in relation to your research question. We've talked about independent variables um, and your dependent variable. So, so in large part, you'll have a pretty good understanding of these as you go into it. All right. Lastly, I'll evaluate your research proposal on APA style, whether it's replicable at technological because that's that is a central factor in applied behavior analysis research is what you're proposing replicable and technological um, how is it organized if you follow the template that i'm going to give you you'll get your points here because you'll be properly organized um, and is it conceptually systematic does that mean if i read through this as a if i go through this as a reader how well does it hang together so that by the end of it, I'd say, huh, I get it. I could go do that, All right? Seems like a lot, doesn't it? Um, there is the template that I give you, right? So here's, a, here's the cover page. And then if you just go through and fill in each of these sections, you'll get most of your points, okay? Um, and I'm also happy to work with you along the way. If you want to send me, work on it, send me a draft, work on a section, tell me you're having trouble with a section, give me something to respond to, I can give you feedback along the way. I'm happy to do that. Um, that that's what, over the next 
two weeks, um, weeks 14 and 15, the discussion section is just going to be about you guys asking me questions about completing either your article reviews or your, your research proposal. The other thing you can look at to see whether or not um, you want to do this research proposal option and to help you get through it, um, I gave you a couple of examples from former students in this class. So here is um, one project entitled Positive Reinforcement for Escape Maintained Behaviors. I know some of you are actually doing that. It has the literature review. You can see that it's properly formatted. There's the research question, the methods section that has subjects, setting, materials and equipment. It's all in there. Okay, So you could read through these, you get a really good sense of what yours should also look like. The other proposal was on the effects of increased support for paraprofessionals on um, positive social interactions with students with significant disabilities. I know some of you are focusing on research questions related to coaching and paraprofessionals. So this one applies more for you. Right. So again, you can look through here and see how this person has completed the template. Both of these projects um, got high ratings in terms of points. So, which one do you want to do? Do you want to do the article review? Fabulous. Do four of those, post them in the assignment section, bingo, you are done. It's not going to be that quick. It's going to take some time and energy for you to, to roll through those, but I think you're going to learn a lot by going through those four article reviews. Or, do you want to do the research proposal? And I'm happy to help guide you through that research proposal over the next couple of weeks. Um, and this is going to be a good option for those of you who think you really want to step forward with your research question and explore it as part of your master's project or as part of a dissertation. So look through both these options, think about them. In this week's discussion section, you can ask me questions about either of them to help you make a decision. Um, the sooner you make a decision, the sooner you can get going. And, uh, and again, I'll help you all along the way. We've got plenty of time left in the course to get this done. Don't fret. I'm there with you. All right? Take care. I'll see you online.